Uh, hello, uh, good day. So, welcome sa uh, the continuation of our uh, learning session in uh, project construction and management. We are now on learning session 3, uh, which is uh, construction uh, pre-planning. Okay, so last time uh, we stopped on uh, lesson 3 to 6. Okay, so this is uh, preliminaries and uh, site management. Okay, so we have to remember guys in uh, uh, construction, uh, site management is very important. Okay, so uh, re uh, remember na uh, we will be staying on site on the on the duration of the project so that is why this is very uh, one factor that we, uh, we must consider the preliminaries and site management okay so after a contract is uh, awarded the contractor has to so this is the one uh, or this these are the things that the contractor needs to do okay so number one okay so the contractor uh, needs to determine the key personnel to supervise the work okay so uh, this is a way uh, to to let us say minimize the cost if you choose the right person to supervise the work okay so not not only the cost but the the completion of project uh, timely or on time Okay, so number two, uh, make provisions for the equipment to be used. Okay, so in every activity, we all know that uh, there are uh, things that we uh, humans or let us say manpower cannot uh, do. Okay, so to finish the work uh, as early as possible. So that is why we need uh, equipment. Okay, so we have to make provisions for, for the equipment uh, to be used. So what are the equipments? that are needed uh, on this project okay the number three uh, we have to determine the location and methods of erecting uh, temporary structures okay so what are the uh, examples of temporary stru uh, structures okay so number one is the bunk house okay or staff house or the the store storage house or storage facilities of the materials okay so these are the examples of uh, temporary structures that uh, needed uh, on the site so we have to to determine the location okay so and the methods okay so we have to consider the cost of also for this one okay so remember that when we are uh, on the project uh, we have to consider in our activities or our decision always is uh, we have to consider the cost okay okay so project undergoes number one uh, these are the the things that we need to do in a project see so number one is planning the number two is the execution of major activities. So what are the major activities uh, of the project? So we have to identify that one. And there are ways or tools to identify that one that uh, we will be uh, discuss uh, later. Okay, so there are le uh, learning sessions uh, for that uh, uh, matter. Okay. Number three is project phase out. Okay, so we have to consider that one also in the project. Then project and uh, project construction life cycle uh, requires number one the site must be found and boundaries are uh, located. Okay, so we have to be cautious on the on the site. Okay, so we cannot uh, we cannot have a problem. Uh, after the construction because we exceeded in the boundaries okay so we have to locate that one okay so to to minimize uh, problems uh, in the future okay so number two is a uh, plan must be drawn 
Okay, so this is the number one rule in engineering. Okay, so when we are doing something or planning, it must be drawn. Okay, so that is why we are engineers because we read uh, plans. Okay, so we cannot do activities by just uh, um, in our dialect, it's empty empty or mata mata. Okay, so we need a plan. Okay, so that is why there is a saying that uh, plan your work and uh, work your plan. Okay, so that is very important in uh, a construction uh, business. Okay, so number three, plan must be approved by the owner. Okay, so it must be approved. Why? Because if the owner during the inspection don't like what you build then he or she did not approve it then the cost will be shouldered by the uh, contractor because you build something without the consent or the approval of the owner so in every activities or every structure uh, structure that you are uh, building you must uh, ask the permission or approval of the owner Okay, because they will be the one uh, who will pay you in your project. Okay. Number four, building permit must be secured. Okay, so these are the paperwork that needed to be settled in the uh, government side. Okay, so there are building permits that we need to submit in the local government unit. Uh, in the in our case, uh, this is the engineering office of every uh, LGU. Okay, so there are uh, requirements that uh, they need uh, during construction. Uh, others are specific. Okay, so we need uh, to know that one uh, so that we will not be having problem in the future also. Okay, so we need to secure building permit. Okay. Okay, so number five is the succession of personnel follows. Okay, so this will be the staff, your staff or your people in the project. Then the organization of work. Okay, so proper assignments and sequence of the works, making the best use of labor materials and time okay so we have to we have to be very cautious for this one because these items can make your expenses higher or you can save uh, money okay so that is why proper assignments and sequence of the works making the best use of these three okay so number one is labor Number two, materials and time. Okay, so remember that if you finish the project uh, on time or before the time, uh, imagine your savings for that one. Okay, so then if you have the right people, labor, and you have the right materials. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we are now on 3-7 of our learning session in a learning session 3 for the construction pre-planning. Okay, so this is entitled Planning Program and Progress Chart. Okay, so in every uh, activities or project, uh, this is uh, very important, uh, especially on projects that uh, are already started. Okay, so the planning program and progress chart. Okay, so especially for those uh, big projects okay so this is very uh, critical uh, in monitoring our projects okay so the project manager needs this one for monitoring the output and the progress okay so this is where uh, the project manager decide what to do if there are problems okay okay so the most important part of the works uh, organization are okay so number one we have the preparation of the comprehensive time and progress chart for the execution of the work okay so we have to prepare that one if you are handling projects and 
doing the managerial uh, uh, works, especially a project manager, so you have to prepare a, co- a comprehensive uh, time and practice chart. Okay. Okay. So number two, uh, per the periodic revision of the chart, uh, circumstances demand, and the regular comparison of a progress chart. Then the project manager is required to prepare and approve time on progress chart. Okay. So number one. The time on progress chart must show an analysis of the chief elements and types of construction in bold. Okay, so this is very uh, uh, broad for the project manager. So that is why uh, the project manager needs a good people handling of projects because there are many items that needed to be analyzed and uh, monitor okay so number two is scheduled dates of commencement and completion of every stage of the main contract on of subcontracts okay so if you are me uh, if we if we are dealing with chart uh, the chart automatically shows and offer the following information okay so this is what we we expect on the chart okay so number one is the sequence of operation or the activities okay so what uh, first thing first okay so what are the things that need to be done first so that other activities can uh, execute or can follow okay so number two is the target time and date for their completion okay so in every operation or in every activities there are specific target okay and time of their completion so that is why uh, project managers or engineers are very specific on this one okay so they are the one who will uh, uh, monitor okay this is, uh, the timely completion of every activities okay so if there are problems so this is where the decision making of project manager uh, enters okay so they need to be flexible and uh, wise in decision making. Okay, so number three is the rate of which they must be carried out. Number four, the owner staff and contractor staff should be familiar with the information. Okay, so we cannot uh, we cannot have a staff of the owner and, and contractor who are not. Uh, the who, who are not build a uh, will averse on the information okay so the problem of this one is maybe uh, during monitoring uh, they will not um, be uh, they will not meet on one on one uh, direction okay so number five uh, if some of opera- the uh, operations are to be done by subcontractors they should be notified in advance and give and give a clear understanding okay number six the chart also tends to prevent a changes in design okay and layout with consequent delays and increase in cost okay so if we are following the chart and there are no problems so it approves a uh, changes in design okay Okay, so we are now on the 3-8, so maintaining time and progress chart. Okay, so for this one, uh, this is part of the monitoring or also of the project manager. Uh, so these are the things that is needed during construction pre-planning. Okay, so the effective manage, uh, the effectively manage the flow of the project, okay? This is one of the defini- uh, definition of the progress charts, okay? The effectively, uh, to effectively manage the flow of the project. Okay, so number two is chart should be flexible so as to, the, as to permit a modification to meet unknown contingencies that may uh, arise. Chart is divided into many horizontal spaces. As, uh, as are required for the major activities of the job okay so the vertical columns is phase four okay so this is for the vertical uh, description of items okay so number two 
the target date of leasing subcontract or purchase orders. Okay, so number three, starting date and completion of the project. The number four is the one or two extra columns for the possible overrun. Okay, so possible uh, overrun means the extra activity or extra cost of the project. Okay, so these are the uh, contingencies of the project. So there are items that uh, during planning uh, it's not included. Okay, so this is where it goes. Okay. Okay, so 3-9, uh, planning and scheduling with gun chart, okay? A uh, gun chart, guys, is very common tool in engineering, okay? So, this is a tool used for planning and scheduling simple projects, okay? So, this is an example of a gun chart, okay? So, if, if you can observe, uh, there are many horizontal spaces, so this one, then this one are the vertical. Okay, so what you observe of this chart is there are project description. So this one. So these are the activities or the operations to be done. Okay, so design and planning, uh, sample approval, contract execution. Then for pre uh, construction, we have mobilization, uh, demolition, rough framing, okay, structural repair. So, these are the activities, okay? So, this or description. Okay, so for this uh, column, these are the percent completion on every activities, okay? So, if you observe, this activity is already 100%. So, meaning, uh, this is complete, okay? So, done. Then, construction is 35%. So, if you can observe, there are items which are not yet started, but other items are, are already uh, finished, okay? So, this is the time, okay? So, this is the start date, and this is the completion date, okay? Or the target completion date, okay? So, if you observe, in each every activities, there are a schedule or time that needed to be uh, followed okay so this are this is the start then end okay so this is the important a uh, tool uh, needed by the project manager for the monitoring of the project uh, which is handled also by a project engineer okay so for this one okay so to prepare the gun chart okay so these are the steps number one the project manager has to identify the major activities okay so what are the major acti activities then we need to write that one in the gun chart okay the number two estimates for each activity are made and the sequence was uh, determined okay number three once completed the chart indicates which activities were to occur including their plan duration and when the where to occur okay so this is the schedule for every activity okay okay so so for learning session three uh this is uh part two i think uh that's all guys for this one uh because we uh we are already on the 18 uh minutes uh time so thank you for listening and I hope you get something from this uh, discussion and see you on the next part of the learning session 3 on the construction pre-planning. Thank you.